I implore you to make this table. I implore you to make a little four by four. On test day, you're gonna get a little uh, like whiteboard type thing that you can write on. And during the first 15 minutes of your exam, you'll have that, that, that period of time where you can either read the instructions about how to take the exam, which I don't recommend that you do, because it's very self-explanatory, and instead use that time on your whiteboard to draw in the four by four table with the values and the formulas so that everything is sitting there for when you encounter a biostats question. So let's get started with how you actually fill out this four by four table. So the first thing that you do in the four by four table is you have to know where the positives and negatives go. So this is where they belong. The positives are up at the top left corner and the negatives are the boxes that go to the right and down one. So this is how you have to fill this out. And this is important because you have to know what these axes represent. So across the top, you should write reality and across uh, on the left side going from top to bottom you should write the word test so what this means is that um, on the left side that's what the test shows so the test was positive or the test for the disease was negative and on the top it's the reality uh, in reality if it's positive you actually have the disease or in reality if it's negative you actually don't have the disease so that is how you sort of move through this now let's start filling in these tables specifically in these boxes so if let's look at the top left box if in reality it's positive meaning you actually have a disease and the test says that it's positive as well that is a true positive because think about it if you actually have cancer and a test to test for lung cancer comes back and says yes you're positive for cancer then that's a true positive because you do actually have cancer now let's look at the box just below that so if in reality you have cancer using our example that we're that we just talked about but the test comes back negative and says no you don't have cancer but again in reality you do that would be a false negative because think about it you have it in real life but the test is telling you that you don't so therefore that's a false negative so now let's focus on these other boxes we're going to start at the top there if in reality you don't have cancer but you get a test that says you do have cancer that is an example of a false positive um, and now going down to the last box remaining in our four by four table, if in reality you do not have cancer and you get a test that says, no, you're negative, you do not have cancer, that's an example of a true negative. So this is how you fill out the four by four table. And this is where you have to start regardless of which formula you're being asked for on your exam. You have to know where all these values lie and you have to know plus and minuses for reality and test. So now I'm going to replace all of these with abbreviations just to make this lecture a little bit easier. So that's true positive, false positive, false negative, and true negative. I just changed the words to abbreviations. And I'm going to pop this in the bottom corner of our video so that you can refer to it as we move throughout the slides. The next thing that we need to go over is that when we're doing these equations for sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value, all of the equations are going to be equal to something over something plus something. And I'll explain all of this. Don't worry if that's vague and confusing. But I really want to show you that all of these equations are equal to x over x plus y. And we're going to be drawing in arrows today. So if I draw in an arrow like this, the equation would be x over x plus y. And what the x and the x plus y represent is that the numerator is the back part of the arrow, so where the arrow starts. So in this example, you see a down arrow going from the true positive down into the false negative. So if we were to make an equation for that arrow, it would be equal to where, the numerator would be where that arrow starts. So the numerator would be one, and the denominator would be where the arrow starts plus where the arrow ends. So the, the denominator would be one plus two. So this is what I'm referring to here. In this example, you see the downward arrow going from true positive to false negative. So if I were to create an equation for that arrow using our four by four table, the dirty USMLE method, the equation would be equal to one because the numerator is where the arrow starts over one plus two. And again, the denominator is where the arrow starts plus where the arrow ends. So that's how all of these equations are gonna work. If you are understanding everything to this point in the video, the rest is gonna be a piece of cake. You're gonna know all these equations really, really easily. So let's, let's start using real examples instead of all these vague equations. So let's talk about sensitivity. So how do we remember which direction to draw the arrow for the dirty USMLE method of learning the 4x4 table? So if you're overly sensitive in life, if you have too much sensitivity, you're just going to be constantly brought down because you're overly sensitive. Everything's going to get you 
uh, upset. So if you're overly sensitive, you're gonna be brought down in life. So we're gonna use that to remember that sensitivity is the down arrow. And we put our down arrow right there in our four by four table, going from true positive down into false negative. So don't be overly sensitive because you'll be brought down in life. Drop that down arrow right in the beginning of the table and that's where sensitivity belongs. So now using the equation method that I described previously, let's go through how we write out the equation for sensitivity. So if we know that sensitivity is equal to X over X plus Y, the numerator has to be where the arrow begins. So sensitivity is equal to the numerator being a true positive. Now we need to get the denominator. And recall that I said that the denominator is equal to where the arrow begins plus where the arrow ends. So sensitivity is equal to true positive over true positive plus false negative. Okay, make sense guys? Numerator is where the arrow starts. Denominator is where the arrow ends. How do you know where to put the arrow for sensitivity? Because if you're too sensitive in life, you'll be brought down. So we have a downward arrow at the first eligible location in our four by four table. So that's sensitivity right there. True positive over true positive plus false negative. Let's move on to specificity. So how do we know which direction to draw our arrow for the dirty USMLE four by four method? Well, if you're really, really specific in life, then being specific is a good thing. You're gonna move up the chain or up the ladder in the workforce, right? You're really, really specific. You get all your tasks done because of how specific and accurate you are. So being really specific moves you up in life. So specific going up. Now we're gonna draw that into our four by four table in the next eligible spot. So specific is going up from true negative to false positive. Now let's work through our equation for specificity. So specificity is equal to X over X plus Y. And again, the numerator is equal to where the arrow starts. So because the arrow is going up and it starts with the true negative, our numerator in the specificity equation is true negative. Now remember the denominator is equal to where the arrow starts plus where the arrow ends. And therefore it's gonna be is equal to, for denominator of specificity, it's true negative plus false positive. So that is specificity. So again, how did you know which direction to draw your arrow? Well, if you're really, really specific in life, you're gonna move up the ladder in the workforce. And therefore we put that arrow going up and that is specificity. So just to recap so far, here's what we have. If you're overly sensitive in life, you're gonna be brought down by everything. And if you're overly specific in life, you're gonna move up the ladder in life. Those are your arrows. And remember, all of your equations are equal to where the arrow starts divided by where the arrow starts plus where the arrow ends. So this is where we are so far. Not too bad. You already know sensitivity. You already know specificity. You already know how to draw the four by four tables. You guys are doing great. Bear with me. Now we're gonna talk about positive predictive value. So positive predictive value to, to figure out which way the arrow is gonna go, we're gonna use a numeric grid or a graph grid. Now, if you're really, really positive, you just move in the positive direction. Pretty easy for anyone who took ninth grade math. So I hope that you guys are with me. I hope you pass ninth grade algebra. Here we go. Positive, you're gonna to move to the positive side on the graph. Therefore, we're gonna stick our arrow in our four by four table for positive predictive value. So if positive predictive value is equal to the numerator over the denominator, what's our numerator, guys? That's right, it's where the arrow begins. So it's equal to a true positive. What's our denominator? It's equal to where the arrow begins plus where the arrow ends. So therefore, it's over true positive plus false positive. You guys are murdering this, you're killing it. Excellent job, that's positive predictive value. So again, how did you know where to draw your arrow? Well, it's positive predictive, so positive moving in the positive direction of a graph. You draw it from left to right in the first eligible spot of our four by four table. So here's a recap of where we are so far. We already talked about sensitivity and specificity. Now I'm just gonna throw in positive predictive value and you should be able to derive all the equations from knowing these arrow directions. So obviously we're gonna wrap up with negative predictive value. Again, we're coming back to that, that graph that you should be familiar with if you made it through high school. So negative predictive value, it's probably no surprise guys and gals, our negative predictive value arrow will move in the negative direction. So if we throw that into our four by four table in the only spot left that you could possibly put an arrow, negative predictive value is gonna be equal to X over X plus Y. What's the numerator? It's where the arrow begins, so it's a true negative. What's the denominator? It's where the arrow begins plus where the arrow ends. That's true negative plus false negative. So negative predictive value is going to be equal to true negative divided by true negative plus false negative. So in review, here's where we are. We have 
you're overly sensitive in life, you're going to be brought down, so the red arrow goes down. If you're overly specific in life, you're going to shoot up the ladder in the workforce and you're going to go up. If you're positive, you're going to move in the positive direction. And if you're negative predictive value, you're going to move in the negative direction. That's it. If you can do this, you can answer every single freaking question that they ask you about a 4x4 four four table. In the next video in our series, we're going to go through specific examples where you actually have to fill in numbers and crunch out some calculations. But all of that is going to be derived from an understanding of this 4x4 four four table. Please listen to me, guys. This is so high yield. They're going to ask you these questions and they are softballs. You should hit these out of the park because they are free points on your test day. Please understand this. Please know it well. And here is the summary. If anybody needs the mnemonics for how you got here, here's where we are. Positive predictive value moving in the positive direction. Negative predictive value that, excuse me, that should say NPV, not PPV. Moving in the negative direction. Being overly sensitive will bring you down in life, but being overly specific will take you up. That's it. That's the four by four table. I really hope this was useful. I have not personally seen a better method than this. So use the dirty USMLE four by four method. Look out for the next part of the biostatistics series coming soon.